Hello, hello, and welcome to the Feet by Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today is December the 6th, 2023. We are doing Bible study today on this video in the book of 1 Corinthians and in chapter 6. Uh, this is Paul speaking in this book. It's a letter to the Corinthian saints, and he's, uh, he's going to get into more discussion regarding their behavior and uh, some of the things that have become an issue among them as they have become new saints in the body of Christ, okay? So here, let's start. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? So he begins to talk to them about everything, a lot of different issues that they have among themselves and how important it is to keep whatever issue that they may have been having within the kingdom, because to take it outside the kingdom is going to bring in another type of counselor. It's not going to be the Holy Ghost counseling. That's the specific reason behind it, but it's going to be another counsel that's going to give, you know, give advice to a saint, which would not be the counsel of God. So uh, Paul begins to uh, edify them, ed educate them on the reason why that shouldn't be done. So verse 2 says, do you, not, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? The saints judge the world. The kingdom judges the world, he said. And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Okay, so he said, God has put you, basically he's letting them know, you know, uh, what position God has placed you in, okay, because... <laughs> When you read it, then you go more deeper into it because that's what he says. You know, God has placed uh, judgment in the hands of the kingdom. So, if you know, God has placed judgment in the hands of the kingdom by, you know, for the world, then can't you judge the kingdom of better too? He's saying. So he says, "Know ye not that we shall judge angels?" Okay. So how much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. For I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is no, not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brother. So, but brother, go ye to the law with brother and that before the unbelievers. So he said, but brother goes to the law with the brother, and that before the unbelievers, says, now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because you go to the law, one with another. So why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? For no, you do wrong and defraud, and that you defraud your own brother, he's saying. They, so they had gotten into defrauding one another, okay? So they were, even in the kingdom. Okay, so this is because this is who Paul is addressing. He's not addressing those in the world, those who don't believe in God, those who have not submitted themselves to the Heavenly Father. But he's addressing a group of saints that have come into the kingdom, and he's saying that they have begun to defraud one another. He's addressing that now. He says, now, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infinite nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now he tells them that, but then he adds this on too, just to let you know that he wants, he knows, you know, who you were before. He says, and such were some of you, but you are washed, but ye are sanctified. You are sanctified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So all these things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any of them. Letting us know that, you know, once you've been washed from the things that you once did, uh, that were not right in the sight of God, you know, to not want to engage back in them again, now, and if you do, again, you've been washed from them. You've been covered from them. But if you go from under that covering, it's like going back into those things, and uh, the covering is no longer there. But 
Again, you can easily, quickly repent, uh, go before the Heavenly Father, and confess again, and uh, be back covered again, okay? Verse 13 says, Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats. But God shall destroy both it and them. So now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God has both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up also in his power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. So now he's beginning to go more into talking about uh, fornication and how serious fornication is as it pertains to the body and the spirit. Because once an individual has been birthed into the kingdom, they have been converted into the kingdom, they've been born again of the Holy Spirit, they become one with heaven, they become one with the Spirit. And if they begin to go into uh, fornication, fornication begins to become a part of who they are. Okay, They become one with that Spirit. And again, from becoming one with that Spirit, just like becoming one with Christ, you begin to go forward and make Christ-like beings. Well, if you become one again with this, if you become one with the spirit of fornication, you'll begin to go forward and make fornicated like beings, okay? And that's the order and operation of the spirit with any other spirit, okay, other than Christ. We can see from God's original plan, he explains to us the order of the Holy Spirit. And he explains to us the order of and operation of how a spirit goes forward in the earth okay and so we can take that example that he's given us and shown us through the power of the holy spirit to see how other spirits also counteract okay they act the same way and uh, the difference is of course is that god is the good spirit and those spirits are not the good spirits that's the difference but nevertheless the structure and the way that they go forward the structure and the way that they uh, manifest is the same in the fact that it goes through trying to duplicate and make a kingdom okay just like christ makes a kingdom for the heavenly father kingdom of god kingdom of heaven okay so uh and then he goes on to say here and uh let's see where are we at verse 15 know ye not that your bodies are the members of christ so shall i then take the members of christ and make them to be members of the harlot God forbid. So what? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body. For two, says he, shall be one flesh. So then once you become joined to whatever it is, as I just stated, you begin to go forward. Just like now he uses the example of the harlot. So now the harlot, because that's what the fornication spirit is, whoremonger or harlotry. So it begins to duplicate that spirit in the earth through people that it begins to possess because spirits possess people just like Christ has possessed us through the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and of the covering of the Holy Ghost and the anointing, the kingdom of God, okay? All that Christ Je Jesus did in order for salvation to be a manifestation for mankind in the earth to be a partaker of the kingdom of God. Another spirit has done that on behalf of the kingdom of darkness and is set in place to do the similar thing, the same thing as the kingdom of light, but only to lead in a different path and only to do a different form of operation in order to do a different, uh, and to build up a different type of kingdom, okay? Kingdom, the kingdom of the devil. So nevertheless, uh, let's see here. Where are we at? Verse 16. So what? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two says he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Okay? And notice how he says that once you begin to operate in the Holy Spirit, you become one. Once you become one with God, you become one spirit. But once you go back out into doing fleshly things, you become flesh. Okay? Even though we say the word spirit, 
because it's a force, okay? It's a presence. It's an essence that takes over an individual, okay? It's actually the flesh spirit that's taking over that individual and begins to drive them. So uh, he says here in verse 18, flee fornication. Every sin that a man does is without the body, but he that commits fornication sins against his own body. So what? Know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are brought with a price, and Christ paid that ultimate price of uh, salvation when he was laid on the cross, when he was crucified, okay? That was a horrible price that he paid for us to be saved today. So then... Uh, he says, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, Because we become the possession of God. We are the possession of heaven. We are the possession of the kingdom of God because of the Holy Ghost, because of the Holy Spirit, and because of Christ Jesus and salvation. So we have been possessed. We have been bought with a price from heaven. Heaven's own ordainment. Heaven's own arrangement. Heaven's own holy will hallelujah 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 all right so that is going to conclude the uh, chapter 6 bible study today from first corinthians god bless you god be with you and i will see you as we continue to go forward here with the feed my sheep foundation bible study video channel with revelations and messages and bible study from the feed my sheep foundation god bless you